What? It's this friggin' guy who's like the AI voice. It's not the mostly facts guy. I want my money back, man. Give me my money back. I am so upset. Oh, I know you don't feel that. But anyway, what company will never see another dime of your money? Story one, Hertz Car Rental. My rental car's tire popped out of the blue whilst I was driving through Germany. They acknowledged that it was not my fault and I was not charged, but I was charged for the damage that a popping tire caused to the body of the car, despite it being a direct consequence. They took my money without my consent and then refused to pay me back. Luckily, it was for a work trip, so I didn't need to worry and was compensated. But still, curse hurts. I've posted my hurts experience before, and I'll gladly post it again. Was in Seattle for work and took a few days off to fly the girlfriend up to go to Olympic National Park over 4th of July weekend. Went to pick up the rental car I had reserved from the local Hertz location and was told by the associate that they didn't have enough cars and the two people in line ahead of me were getting the last two cars they had. I step off to the side to call Hertz corporate while the guy is helping these two people and am told the only cars available in the area are at the airport a $50 cab ride away, and that it would be over double the cost of what I had reserved online. I asked them to check local places in the area and was assured I would be called back. I walked back over to the local agent to find he had bailed without saying a single word to me. So at this point, I'm 40 minutes from the airport, my girlfriend is getting ready to land, and we had a two-hour drive to make that night and no rental car for the trip unless I wanted to pay over double the original cost. I wait for the call back, of course don't get one, and call again 30 minutes later. I get told the same thing and request to speak to a manager, who of course just stepped out but will call you right back when he's in. Another 30 minutes later, another call, and this time I tell them I am staying on the line until they connect me with a manager or someone who can get me a car at the price I reserved. The associate told me they couldn't stay on the line with me and promptly hung up. Curse everything about that company. And to add something I forgot, I was traveling enough for work at the time that I was one of their Hertz Gold Plus blah 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 rewards people literally had rented a car Monday through Friday for around 48 weeks of the year for over a year and a half, and that's how I was treated. That is awful. It reminds me of that scene from Seinfeld where they just say that they don't have the rental car, and Seinfeld says, but I made a reservation. You know how to take the reservation, but you don't know how to keep the reservation. And that's the most important part, isn't it? Anyone can just take reservations. Did he try and follow up with Hertz on this? And how did he get to the airport? Hopefully their weekend wasn't shot. Story 2. Best Buy. Their sales practices are so shady. The last time I was in there, I bought a laptop and an iPad and some other things. As I was being rung up, the price sounded a bit off, but I figured maybe I misadded. Then the salesperson escorted me all the way to the door holding the receipt. When she handed it to me, it had an extra charge of $100 for their tech support, something I had expressly stated I didn't want. I had to go stand in the returns line to take it off. I had to argue with the person there about why I didn't want it, along with her trying to convince me why I should keep it. Just price match with Amazon. I used Best Buy when I don't want to wait for shipping. Yep, exactly. I know I'm quoting old shows again here, but there was the Family Guy episode where they went for the mattress, and after asking what the name of it is, they just order it on Amazon and it's flown there by a drone. Personally, I haven't had that big of an issue with Best Buy. I haven't really bought anything as big as this person. And usually at Best Buy, they have these sort of windows that show the price before you pay anyway. I'm sorry this guy had such a bad experience. Story 3. Bob's Discount Furniture I paid an extra $150 for them to remove my old mattress. Apparently, all I paid for was for them to move my old mattress to the curb. 
A two-hour phone call later, and they came back the next day to get it. Never dealt with Bob's discount furniture. It's kind of cool that they wanted to try something different with their mascot and have a puppet, but some of the versions of that frickin' puppet are creepy. Something about marionettes like that. Okay, here we go, third movie reference in a row. Did you ever see Team America? Yeah, those things were creepy. Actually, all of them were acting a bit too disgusting for them to be creepy. If they played it straight in any way, that thing would have just been all cringy as hell. Story 4. Toys R Us. I don't know what says I'm a boring adult now more. The fact that this juggernaut of my childhood has ended, or that I don't really care, even though I want to. Story 5. Victoria's Secret. Their stuff has gotten crummier and crummier, and their in-store shopping experience is a nightmare. I can't stand the sales associates. Agree. It used to be expensive because it was quality merchandise. Now you're just paying for the name, and the stuff doesn't last any longer than the stuff you get at Target. Or Target. There has been a rise in the quality of low-end clothing items. Target and even Walmart have both seen slow but steady rises in quality. I would not go so far as to say their store brand clothes are better or even as good as name brand, but the quality gap between 10 for $15 underwear and 1 for $7 underwear is getting much smaller. Story 6. Bank of America. I closed my account 2006-ish. I got one of those poor fees when I was in college. I resolved that if this was how they treated me when I was poor, then they clearly didn't want my money when I had a proper post-college job. What's a poor fee? You don't have enough money in your account to meet our minimum balance requirement. Here's a $35 fee because you don't have enough money. But wait, there's more. We see you overdrew your account by $32.44 when we charged you the $35 minimum balance fee. Please enjoy the $25 overdraft charge. Yeah, never understood that. You want to punish me by not having money in my account by charging me money. Make it make sense. And now certain accounts, you have to pay a little more for overdraft protection. It honestly feels like a shakedown. Story 7. Wayfair. I've never had such a horrific consumer experience. My husband and I were in the midst of buying a house last October, so I signed up for Wayfair's dinky credit card as a way to buy some stuff interest-free for six months. I ended up spending around $435. A few weeks after I received my items, I log into my online account to make a payment on my card and see that while my available credit is $65, my balance is zero, and I have nothing due. I call Wayfair. They have no idea what I'm talking about and don't believe me at first, until finally I'm told there was a hold on my order somewhere in the system that wasn't releasing the charge to the credit card bank. I'm told it's released and nothing changed. I call the bank. They say it's still an issue on Wayfair's end. After weeks and hours wasted on the phone with both companies, I end up on a conference call with both Wayfair and the bank and learn that neither entity has any clue what's going on, but the hold on my order was going to remain in place in March 22, 2018. I literally could do nothing until then. The bank representative put in a credit dispute to see if that would speed up the release, but nothing happened. Last month, I log in to finally make a payment and see that my full balance is available. I have nothing due, and there's an option to close my account, so I did. The next day, Wayfair sends me a threatening email and letter saying they've been trying to contact me for months, lies, and are going to report this to the credit agencies. Let me tell you, I lost my loving mind. I called up Wayfair and raised unholy hell to someone. It wasn't that I didn't want to pay for my order. It was that this had been ongoing for over half a year at this point, with no further communication on their part. I told them I want a payment plan, and I was refused because of the credit dispute that Community Bank did to try and help me, and the CS executive I spoke to refused to believe me when I told him the situation. Eventually, after 20 minutes, he finally decides to review my account notes and offers me the chance to pay one-third of the balance 
and they would eat the remainder. I immediately gave them my payment info, and months later and hours wasted, I'm finally done with Wayfair. Curse them. I completely hate them and wish nothing more than for them to fold. Their jingles are as annoying as hell, too. Story 8. Adobe. Their Creative Cloud subscription was $49.95 a month. After I signed up, they kept increasing the price every month. When it got to $75 a month, I canceled. Now they're trying to sell it to me for $49.95 again. Adobe software is very easy to pirate. Curse them. Oh, this is all too painful. Yea, I too am one of those lowly designer serfs that are under the Adobe Lord tax system. I'm mostly independent, but there are still a few jobs that sort of rely on me having Adobe software. So I can't quite justify getting out of this closed wall system and moving on to other less expensive products. I'd love to be able to be done with it. I was using Adobe stuff before when you could actually buy them. And I don't think their quality has changed either. With all this money coming in, they really don't have any impetus to really improve or innovate. As long as they're getting paid, why improve? Curse Adobe. Story 9. I wish I could say Comcast. I'm stuck here. Slow internet with AT&T or fast internet with Comcast. It's the same as if I want a bullet in my left lung or right. I remember when the internet was handled by a lot of mom and pop places. Of course, this is back when you were using AOL or some other service, but still, it was a lot less hassle. How did we get from being able to deal with actual people to all these multi-million dollar corporations taking control? Story 10. Aria, a UK computer store. I bought a mouse a couple years ago, but they never shipped it. Every time I emailed, they ignored me. I was writing really witty and clever messages, too. Made the suggestion of sending something different if they didn't have the stock. Nope. I get an email with just one line. This has been refunded. So I emailed back. I mean, what the hell? And I was ignored. For two more weeks. I left a scathing review on Trustpilot, which they suppressed so I sent an incredibly awful email. Finally, I get a call from one of their sales reps. As an apology, they would give me £10 off my next order. Having spent more than £3,000 with them over the previous couple of years, I took this as an insult. I now share my experience whenever I can to make sure people avoid their absolute awful service. Can confirm. Used them for years, spent probably £10,000 on stupid PC gaming stuff that I couldn't afford mainly. Then, one time, they got my order wrong. Shipped me the wrong heatsink for my board. Never got a response, never got a refund, never got an RMA to return the wrong item. Luckily, I paid by credit card, so I was able to get a charge back. I kept that incorrect item for years just in case anything happened with it. Eventually, I donated it to a local computer charity, tried to use my account a few months after that, and they had a deal on a B-grade router. My account was put on hold due to problems with an order. All right then, see ya. Story 11. Sprint. Overpriced phones, awful network. Final straw was when they demolished the cell tower near my house because residents complained about the view so I had no signal inside my house, then refused to give me a base station. If I can't make phone calls inside my own home, I'm not going to keep my service with you. As one final parting shot, they refused to unlock my phone unless I paid them for another six months of service. Go fornicate yourself, Sprint. Switch to Cricket. Never been happier. I also love Sprint's recent ad campaign. Our coverage is only slightly worse than what our competitors offer, so don't let that stop you from picking us. I thought I had seen an ad Verizon did as a response that was a car in a ditch and said, Do you want a 1% chance you can't call an ambulance or something like that? But I can't find any reference to it. Story 12. Verizon. Too long didn't read? They shafted and wrecked the credit of a loyal 7-year customer. I had my wireless account with them for 7 years. I opened the account when I was 18 and had to put down a cash deposit because I had no credit history at the time. 
So seven years later, I called them to cancel my account. The company I got hired by provided a phone and data plan, so I joined that instead. When I called them, it was three days before the seventh year ran out. I informed the rep that I would not be renewing and wanted to close the account on the expiration date. They said, Oh, sorry to see you go. You were a loyal customer for seven years, so we'll take care of this and there won't be any early termination fee since you're right at the end of your contract. Great! I was also informed I'd be mailed a check with my deposit return. So the account is cancelled. No more bills. I go on my merry way. A year later, I check my credit report and see that my scores have taken a nosedive. These jokers charged a $500 early termination fee on the account, which consumed my initial deposit and placed the account $300 in the red. Then, they sent the account straight to a collections firm. They did this all on the same day I called to cancel. Not once did I get a phone call or email saying that I owed money on the account. I then had to fight with them and the credit bureaus for eight months. They ended up just writing off the debt. I never got my deposit back and it took months to get the negative information off my credit report. My credit got shafted by Verizon also. I was moving overseas so I called and cancelled my account. They instructed me to return the phones to the nearest store and I wouldn't have to worry about being charged for the phones, so that's what I did. Manager took them, provided me with a receipt that they took it and I was on my merry way. About six months later, got a notice that my credit score crashed. Found out that Verizon was charging me $700 for the two phones. I called them and stated that I want one of two things to happen. A. I pay the charge, but I get the phones back and unlocked. B. They write off the bill since the phones were returned. All they've done is give me the runaround before finally telling me to dance off because the bill is with collections. Verizon can go violate themselves. Went with Fi and been happy ever since. Never had an issue with Verizon. That's probably because I've never been with Verizon. If I ever decide to upgrade my pay-as-you-go plan, at least I know who not to deal with. Getting a lot of really useful information here. How about you? Story 13. Planet Fitness. I tried to cancel my gym membership when I had cancer and was housebound. They insisted I come in person or send a certified letter. I told them I couldn't leave the house and that they could speak with my oncology office if they needed proof. They didn't care. I canceled the bank account so they couldn't withdraw another penny. I was so ticked. This. My brother passed away so I went to cancel his membership. Brought death certificate, ID and such. They were like, nope, he has to come in person. This was from the mouth of the manager there. I can only facepalm and leave. Had the bank put a hold on all charges. I always thought it was funny that their slogan is the judgment-free zone. Then they have a flashing light and siren called the lunk alarm that shamed people who made too much noise. Story 14. Bank of Scotland kept me in debt for a year by changing the student overdraft policy from what they promised me when I signed up. Then, a year later, when I was finally out of debt, they changed it back. It was like they were specifically blowing me over. Fornicate you, HBOS. Never again. Story 15. Any company that uses water or other cheap fillers to make ice cream. Some ice creams don't even freeze when they're in the freezer and just stay like if it's slightly melted. Oh, agreed. After working in ice cream for five years, I'm a bit of a snob. I don't buy from grocery stores anymore. I have a local farm that I'll get it from occasionally. So many companies put incredible amount of garbage in their products as fillers or preservatives. It makes the ice cream taste weird. If you check the labels at the store, most don't even say ice cream, but rather something like frozen dairy dessert. If it says frozen dairy dessert, doesn't it still have to contain milk instead of water? It's funny, tomorrow I'm going to go to a local ice cream shop and try out their stuff. I'm getting a pint. Their scoops are kind of expensive. The interesting thing is, their big advertising point is it's made from sheep's milk. Doesn't really bother me. I don't know if it would bother anyone else. Hopefully we'll see if this is any good. I'm torn between the 
coffee chip ice cream and the chocolate peanut butter ice cream. Those are my two favorite flavors. Story 16. Control F GameStop. I'm surprised this hasn't popped up yet. I've started to wait for games to drop in price or waiting for the special edition versions to come out. Much better value for my money, but I can understand those who would rather play the game when it first comes out. Anyways, the reason why I refuse to go to GameStop anymore is because almost every transaction I've had has been with someone who just won't sell me what I want. Back when GTA 5 was coming out, I went to get Sleeping Dogs because I hadn't played it yet. Instead of just selling me the game I needed, the cashier hounded me for not putting that money down on GTA 5. At first I thought he was joking, but then he held me up for 15 minutes, even after I told him I was not interested in pre-ordering GTA 5, trying to convince me not to get Sleeping Dogs and to get GTA 5. Furthermore, no. I don't want your card or to pre-order anything else. I just want the game that I know I came here for. Pre-orders in general are a scam. Anyone who has seen the original Watch Dogs trailer versus what they got, or for that matter watching the, all the cyberpunk hype versus what actually came out, it's all a scam. I have no problem waiting until the game is actually all complete with all the DLC and season pass stuff, it gets bundled on Steam or Epic, and then a sale comes along and it goes down in price. I pay less for a better quality patched up product. Never pre-order. Never surrender. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 17. XM Sirius Radio. You can sign up in seconds, but cannot cancel your service online. I had a family account and we had ended up selling a couple of cars, so we obviously did not want to pay for those cars anymore. You have to call to cancel. Complete bat guano. Anyways, I still had one radio that I wanted to keep. However, I kept getting hung up on, so I googled it. 273,000 complaints about getting hung up on. Wow. So the next call, I said, I am not recording you, but I am recording myself attempting to cancel my radios. They will hang up on you if you tell them you are recording them. It took 40 minutes per radio to cancel. So I said, fine, cancel the other one too, which is upsetting because I love the service, but I can't give money to a company like that. Thanks for the heads up. We had it free for six months when I bought my new car. Now we're getting offers to purchase the service. They just lost a potential customer thanks to how they treated you and 273,000 others. Story 18. Spirit Airlines. Never had such a horrible flight experience or customer service. I've never had a flight with Spirit that wasn't at least three hours late. On the other hand, I got to go to Florida for like 15 bucks. If you've got the time to waste, then it's worth it in my opinion. It's not like you're getting your butt beat like at UA. They marked me as a no-show when I was $20 short on physical cash and refused to let me use a card or ATM two minutes before entry for the flight closed. Wow, that's awful. There was a comedian who supposed that Spirit Airlines actually just tapes pictures of sky to the windows and then they just drive the planes on the highways to your destination. I have flown cheap flights before. Never Spirit, though. Story 19. Dodge. Bought a three-quarter ton Dodge pickup in the early 70s. It had vacuum assist power steering. Every once in a while, if you turned right, the wheel would lock up and not allow you to go straight again when you should be coming out of the turn. I would end up on the sidewalk or the grass the first couple of times. I would have to shut off the engine and restart it again in order to be able to turn the wheel at all. Took it to the dealership after every incident, and they could find no problem. About the fourth or fifth time I took it back, they told me to quit bringing it in to them for that. Next, I wrote and called Dodge Corporate and explained the problem and that the dealership had failed and would not even try anymore. Dodge refused to get involved in any way. I had paid cash for the truck, and so I could not just let them repossess it. 
I was afraid to sell it to anyone because of how dangerous it was to drive, so I parked it on the back 40 and bought a Ford. I still have that Dodge today, and any time I notice it, it reminds me of how corrupt Dodge is. By the way, Dodge, from then to this day, I have bought seven new Ford pickup trucks. You certainly did inconvenience me, but you played yourselves as well. Story 20. E. A. I'm going to be real honest here. One week after the Don't Buy Battlefront all over the forums, everyone started posting screenshots. Some people asked, so what happened to boycotting the game? They got responses similar to, Shut the hell up, Peanhead. It's my money. I do what I want. A lot of people who hate EA were never going to buy it anyways. Their core players who were outraged, a heavy amount ended up buying the game. Story 21. Any company that advertises with loud auto-playing ads on websites, or any company that uses the, oh, the page just loaded, here's the link you wanted, and it's replaced with a spam link the moment before you click on it. Definitely have to keep a blacklist for that one. And this is why the reason ad blockers exist. To be honest, YouTube Premium also does a pretty good job of letting you uh, skip past ads or actually have no ads whatsoever. A lot of pretty cool benefits from premium. Ad blockers are nice too, though. Story 22. Bungie. Bungie really kerfuffled up Destiny 2. It's so hard to believe they were literally given all the building blocks they needed to continue the story and gameplay, etc. that they created, and they threw them out and replaced them with gameplay designed for casual players abandoning their base and replace the story with some light-hearted, family-friendly humor to try and appeal to young teens. They managed to accomplish the feat of ticking off both casual players and their base. Story 23. Sprint. I survived over 10 rounds of layoffs only to be laid off out of the blue. Switched to T-Mobile that day and let the bill go to collections. I hope they go under, even though it will hurt KC. Curse them. Story 24. A local law firm. My significant other needed to get some legal stuff done, but was a little short on cash, so I offered to pay for it. He was quoted less than a grand. But when I got the invoice, it was almost three times what they quoted, and there were discrepancies in the billing. My significant other and I went to the firm, and I very politely asked to speak with someone about the invoice. I made it very clear that I would pay whatever I was owed, but I just had a few questions about where the extra charges were coming from. The lawyer took my significant other aside and told them that he needed to get me under control because I was acting crazy and scaring the receptionist. They ended up taking about $500 off the bill because we were charged twice for something. In my opinion, there were other bogus charges, but I was younger and felt intimidated. While at the time I didn't have much need for a lawyer, I now run a successful business and have their competitors on retainer. Did they use the competitors to address this bill? I'm sure their competitors would have loved to have tried to take a bite out of them. And did they get all the services that they needed from them? Did this change in billing happen before all the services were completely rendered so they had no choice but to stick with it? Story 25. There were certain newspapers in the UK that I steadfastly refused to support which gets very annoying when I fly. It's not at all uncommon for places like airports to have offers like, buy this newspaper for 50p and get a free bottle of water or big old chocolate bar worth £1.50. But the newspaper in question is invariably a dung heap rag like the Daily Mail or Daily Express, which I don't want to support in any way, shape, or form. I generally choose to buy the full price version just so I can tell myself I'm not artificially inflating their circulation count. But there's still part of me that wonders if the giveaway is a loss leader and if the papers will lose money on my sale. In which case, I'd have to seriously consider buying it and tossing the paper in the garbage right away. There's an entire city that refuses to buy the sun and won't be sold in shops there and generations that have followed since are still mad at them. Curse tabloids. Story 26. Now that I live in a city with multiple Krispy Kreme stores, I am never buying donuts from Tim Hortons again. Bro, I thought you were about to call out Krispy Kreme. 
Nice save, because otherwise I'd be obligated to throw some internet hate your way. Krispy Kreme is sacred. Story 27. H&R Block. If you make under $60,000, you can have your taxes done free. You have to find out which service you're covered by, but that's part of the deal all the tax companies make with the U.S. government in order to be allowed to exist. Story 28. Tim Hortons. Not only is their food and drink absolute garbage, but they treat their employees like hell. Story 29. Money Graham. I have no clue how they're still in business. My ex-husband was several thousand behind on child support, so when he filed his federal taxes, they took his whole refund and gave it to me. It was like $6,300. I try to maintain a civil, respectful relationship with my ex for the sake of my children, so I offered to give him back half of the tax money. He's a truck driver, so I figured he could use the extra money. He happily accepts, and because he's a truck driver and in a different state, we decide I would send the money to him through MoneyGram, since he had a bit of an urgent need for the money and wasn't sure when he'd be back in our home state. I try to send the money in two payments, one for $2,500, one for $650. They allowed the one for $650 to go through. They wouldn't allow the bigger payment to go through, though. They said I needed to answer some security questions over the phone. So I call. They ask some very personal questions about my relationship with my ex and ask me why I'm sending him the money. I told them the truth and they didn't believe me, so said they were canceling the transaction. Okay, fine, I'll just wait and give it to him in person. If only it were that easy. Turns out MoneyGram went ahead and deducted the 2500 from my account anyway. So I'm on the phone with them for three hours with several different people who are obviously from a foreign country. I'm in the USA. They won't give me back my money in person. Said I had to wait and get refunded on my card. But they won't give me a reference number and say it could be 10 business days or more before I see the money back. So I've been waiting for weeks to get this money back and have no clue when it'll be returned. I looked up reviews on them and apparently this is very common. And they will take your money even while denying a transaction and then keep it for however long they want. I have no idea what to do now. No clue when or if I'll get the 2500 back. I feel really bad for people who send money in an emergency and have this happen. Because their money can be held up for weeks with no way to get access to it. I'm absolutely furious with MoneyGram. Story 30. Allegiant Airlines. Recently took a flight with them. The departing flight was 3.5 hours late, and another Allegiant flight at the same airport had to turn around and re-land because there was trouble with the plane in the air. Returning flight was on time initially, but we sat on the plane for over an hour, and a flight attendant said we had to get off for repairs because a bolt on the outside of the plane was loose. Great. Got on the plane three hours later, and the landing was the scariest thing ever. The pilot must have overshot the runway. He was hitting the brakes so hard and he made a very fast turn, which makes me think he was running out of runway. I understand flights are late sometimes, but both flights? I was traveling with a toddler and specifically flew to make an eight-hour drive into a two-hour flight. But after all the delays, it would have just been easier to drive. And I still would have had a ticked-off toddler on my hands, but I would have been far less ticked off. I called customer service regarding the departing flight because I paid $80 for my party, three, to sit in the same row. They ended up switching the plane and we were scattered throughout the plane, so obviously I wanted my money back. They were pretty rude. Then I told them next time there's a problem with a plane like the returning plane had problems to tell the attendants to take it seriously. The attendant that came on to tell us about the screw made jokes about it. As a nervous flyer, I don't think it was funny. Customer service said, Well, look at it this way. At least you arrived safely. Well, yeah, that's like your one goal. It'd be like complaining about the food you didn't like at a restaurant and the manager going, At least you didn't get food poisoning. Never again. They have the oldest fleet in the air and it shows. Story 31. Jiffy Lube. Friends charged for an air filter that wasn't replaced. 
They offered me a window wash with a squeegee that I thought was just part of the service, but then they charged me eight bucks for it. A gas station style exterior only wash. Lots of microtransaction type sale items that cranked a $45 oil change at most to $75. That was refusing the more expensive synthetic and high mileage conversions. Curse Jiffy Lube. Never again. Story 32. CPE Incorporated. I signed up to take a mandatory ethics course with them in order to renew my CPA license. It was set up so that my employer would pay for it. I took the course and heard nothing about it and assumed all was fine and dandy. Four months later, they contact me on a Friday night to tell me they never received payment. I told them I'd check with my employer on Monday. So that Monday, I checked with my employer and they told me they'd look into it. On Monday night, I checked my personal email and see that CPE Incorporated had sent me an email about how horrible it is that I haven't paid them in 120 days, the payment is past due, and that if I don't pay now, they literally capitalized it and used an exclamation point that they would send me to a collection agency. It ended up getting worked out with my employer paying them a couple days later. Their attitude with how they contacted me after not hearing from them during all that time sealed the deal for me. I will never use them again. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.